Now it's time to talk about rings. No, not these kind of rings. That, uh, okay, I'm not doing that again. But rings are massively helpful and probably the best way of collecting things together in Sonic Pi and something that we're going to want to use again and again. And I guess rings are a little bit more preferable to things like arrays and dictionaries for collecting things together because they reflect a little bit more how music often works, that music is often built on repeated patterns and things that go in cycles, like beats go in cycles and bars and melodies and all of these musical ideas happen often in repeated patterns and rings are absolutely brilliant for that and I'm going to try and illustrate what a ring is in this video. So in the past we've done things like this where we've said we want to play some stuff all at the same time. We want to play 60 and then we want to play 62. As you know let's do 64 for an E uh, and then let's do um, 65, 66, 67 for a G. And this should give us a chord of C major which it does which is fantastic. And I can keep adding notes to my chord. So let's add in the C above. This is going to give us a fuller chord of C major. And let's just do one more. So let's go up uh, two more so, uh, two more tones. It's going to take us to uh, 74, 76, which is going to be the E above there. So let's do that. And this is going to give us an even fuller chord of C major. Oh, it's lovely. Harmony is great. Anyway, so say we wanted to collect all of that nice C major E chordness into some kind of thing, like a list or something that we can call back later or that we could call elements from that list. Well, this is where rings is going to come in and be really helpful. So the way we create a ring is like this. So we type an open bracket, then we type a ring, and then we type all of the things that we want to put in here. And actually we can put anything into this list. It doesn't just have to be MIDI numbers. It could be MIDI note names. It could be sample names. It could be a list of effects. It could be anything that is a thing in Sonic Pi can be put into a ring. And so you don't need to be limited. Anything you can do just by typing a single command, you can turn into a list by um, just uh, using this ring idea. So if I do ring 60, then ring 64, then ring 67, then ring 72 and then add 76 to the list and that completes my uh, ring. It's a, it's a ring of five things. I can get rid of this and just play this ring all at once and what we'll find is that we get all of those notes sounding at the same time. Now the really big idea to get across here is yes, this is in many ways a list and it's exactly the same as how we had it before. It's kind of the same as this. But instead of thinking of it in a list that goes in a kind of vertical direction, it's better to think of it like a ring. So it looks like this. And the reason that's really helpful is it gets the idea across that when we move off the end of this thing, if we were to keep moving through this ring, it actually goes around in a circle so we get back to the start again. So this list actually doesn't just go 60, 64, 67, 72 and 76. That's not it. This ring actually goes on forever and it just repeats this pattern forever and ever and ever. So the next thing in this list is 60 and the next thing after that is 64 and the next thing after that is 67 and we can carry on moving through this list forever because it works exactly like a circle and just to demonstrate this there's a way of um, choosing an element from our list and we use these square brackets so if I want to play the first thing in this list I just do this and I write zero inside the square brackets and that's saying from this list take the thing that sits at index zero. Slightly weird computer science -y thing that whenever we have a list or a group of anything the first thing is never one it's always zero. So this should play me a nice note of 60. It's not going to play them all anymore because I specified that I want the thing that is sitting at position zero in this list. There we go. So there is note 60. If I want the next note, I'm just going to choose 1 because that's going to be the thing sitting at position 1 in the list, note 64 and E. And we can carry on. Here's position 2, here's position 3, and here's position 4. Oops. But what do you reckon happens if I ask for the thing at position 5 in the list? We've only got things in position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3 and position 4. After that there's nothing else left in this ring. So what do you reckon happens when we ask for thing in position 5? Well it goes back back to the beginning because that's how a ring works. Once we go around the clock face for example, once we've had you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, the next thing is 1. So we just carry on going around this ring. So if I say five and that's going to give me note 60 which is also position zero but it's also position five and here's number six 
that gives us 64 again. So this is trying to get the idea across that these rings are really interesting because they move around in a circle. And once we've got to the end of the ring, we just go back to the beginning again. And this is going to become really, really helpful in lots and lots of things we can do in Sonic Pi. And I'm going to show you some of those in the next video.